So we're outside now and I will uh, show you some of the things you will need to do this uh, job of changing the rear brakes and pads, pads and uh, discs. So you need some brake and clutch cleaner so to de decrease the, the discs with. A handy breaker bar to loosen the wheel nuts. A chisel or old screwed flathead screwdriver along with a hammer. Some Torx Allen keys, I believe. This is called. You could also use a, a drill, a, a bit on an impact uh, socket, but I don't have an impact tool, so I'm going to use those. I also have an, a, a, a piece of rod to extend uh, the power I can give on these. Uh, a brass wire brush. Some uh, high temperature copper paste. A uh, size 12 and a size 13 open-ended spanner. The locking nut if you have lock bolts on. It's, uh, the jack and some uh, axle stands along with some pieces of wood. For the center nut you will need a size 36. Might also need one of these. And of course my trusty brake caliper rewind tool kit. This one can do a variety of vehicles and it has a, a left uh, or counterclockwise and clockwise assembly because on our 207 one side is clockwise the other side is counterclockwise. So don't just buy a universal one because with that one you can only do one size and you'll end up uh, taking a trip to the garage to get the other side done. This is what happened to me a few years back. So I just uh, bought this kit on eBay. It was, I believe, from a, a pre it's, it's by laser. It's pretty good tools, uh, pretty cheap as well. I, th I don't remember the price of this, but I've used it multiples of times, so multiple vehicles already. So uh, it kind of paid for itself. It makes the job a whole lot easier. On, on most calipers you can just push in uh, the, the, the piston with a pair of pliers if you really need to but the rear ones on this have uh, threads so you really need to push and turn turn them in so you can't just push them in okay I'm gonna put the tools aside and we're gonna go and check up our vehicle because we're taking up the rear uh, and taking off the, the stopping power from our uh, rear brakes or handbrake, uh, you can only do if you only do one side. This is not as as uh, critical, but I'm going to do the whole rear side because I'm going to do some other stuff as well. Uh, so I'm going to put my jack under the rear axle, put in my jack stands. And uh, I make sure the uh, gear is engaged and put uh, the pieces of wood in front of your front tires. So that's what I'm going to do next. I already know my handbrake is engaged, I already did this. And I'm going to start jacking up the car. So I'm gonna take you guys underneath. So I just put the jack underneath the rear axle. I'm gonna sit you guys down for a second. And 
and then start jacking it up. Until you clear both wheels of the ground. Okay. And we're going to take our axle stand. As you can see, I need to go a bit higher. My driveway isn't really level. <laughs> That's why I need to go higher on one side than the other. I think that's enough. more push <laughs> so I got one axle stand over there, one over there. I am going to release some of the pressure from my jack. So I release the pressure from the jack. Now make sure the jack stands are in the correct locations. Let's Seems about right. Release some more pressure. And then, just to make sure, jack up the rear axle again. So that if anything happens, right now, the car is supported in three locations. On the rear axle and on the two axle stands.